Good morning, hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. As you prepare for your weekend, let the weekend be full of excitement, anticipation. Now, in the last video that we did on yesterday, I gave you a little small, um, I mean, I was a little bit excited because I saw the hand of God moving, but this happens all the time. And I think the reason why we take the time to share testimonies is because testimonies bring credence to the gospel that we preach. The word is supposed to be confirmed with signs following. Now, some people have used that scripture to say signs follow the word after preaching, where that's not actually what it says. It actually means, according to the Greek, that signs accompany the word that is preached. And at some point, when you have a message the things that happen lend credibility to what you say. Now, mind you, there'll be some people that will say that, that you got to be careful about following signs and wonders, that false prophets do these things. Like, that's a pet peeve for those that want to discredit the prophetic. Because I want you to hear me clearly. You cannot have an imitation unless you have a copy of the real thing. The true prophets of God walk in signs, wonders, and miracles, and their life is full of those things, not just in the church itself, but in the workplace, everywhere you go. Now, this is the thing is, we get ready to go into our lesson for this morning. This situation with COVID-19, the three postures that you can take, one, you can say it's a hoax and you can deal with it from a state of apathy. Those that have done that have died from it. Or you can operate in the spirit of fear and make it bigger than the word of God and still die from it <laughs> or walk around in bondage. Or you can be aggressive with it and attack it head on like Jesus did. Now remember, in the day of Jesus, leprosy was the big thing. <laughs> leprosy was contagious and people kept people at, 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 a, at a serious distance. But Jesus broke through all of that. Jesus didn't have a problem touching people with leprosy. He didn't have a problem with com confronting that because there was nothing that, that was going on in, in that time that Jesus could not handle. And I'm going to tell you as believers, we can, we, there's nothing that's going on right now that the true believer cannot handle. I want you to hear me clearly. The Lord reminded me and told me again a couple of days ago before we did one of our Zoom cast that none of his believers have to die from COVID-19. But the consensus is they need to get their own oil. They need, they need to get a relationship with God where they don't have to walk in fear. You don't have to walk in fear. Listen, you don't have to walk in fear. I mean, like I said, people call me crazy. I'm not wearing no mask. I'm not wearing, Brennan and I do not, are not restricted anywhere we go behind COVID-19. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know people have requirements when you go places. I get that. But I'm not going to be in bondage in my home, in my car, wherever I go. Hallelujah. I walk out there. At most places I go, everybody else is taking the posture. And they look. And some of them look at me strange, but I don't really care because that's not normal. As prophets of God, we have to be different from the world. Hallelujah. Now, I get, like I said, if, if they require that on your job, I get that. Listen, listen, I get that. That's their requirements. But in the house of God, there's got to be a different standard. Hear me clearly. In the house of God, I'm not going to compromise that. In the house of God, there has to be a different standard. How can you pray in faith and operate in fear at the same time? And this may be controversial to some, but it's real simple to me. Hallelujah. Just like in the days of Jesus, he broke protocol. Somebody has the courage to have to have the courage to break protocol. Hallelujah. So what that said, tied us together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get this. It's in the book of St. Luke.
St. Luke chapter 6, starting at verse number 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. All night. That's serious. He continued to pray. And, and when it came, when his day, he called unto him his disciples. And of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. We see an illustration where Jesus spent all night in prayer to get direction on what he was to do. Is And it says, after he continued all night in prayer, then he called his disciples. That's powerful. For those of you that are trying to make direction and make choices independently of prayer, somebody say, Houston, we got a problem. Jesus himself, the Son of God, the Word made flesh, took the time to pray to the Father to get direction on what he needed to do. And I think Jesus, everything that Jesus did was a pattern of how we want to live. And I want to tie this together real quick. He, he, even, he even chose the one who betrayed him through prayer. And, and that's going to that's gonna take another twist because, again, Judas played a very serious role in the plan of God. He was the one that was ultimately going to betray Jesus, but ultimately, by betraying Jesus, fulfilled the plan of God. Now, they say all the time that out of 12 disciples, it's a possibility 12 people, there's always one devil out of the 12 people say that. <laughs> but listen, the bottom line is, is that Jesus prayed and he got direction from the Lord concerning everything he did. Because there was an, there was an illustration in, in one passage of scripture. He says, he, he asked the question, have I not chosen 12 of you and one of you is a devil? He knew that already. He knew what he was dealing with. So it brings us to another point. He had discernment. He had discernment. Now, discernment becomes stronger as you pray. Now, as we see, Jesus knew who Judas was, but he didn't do anything about it. He walked with Jesus for the space of three, three and a half years. And Jesus did nothing about it, but Jesus knew who he was dealing with. Now listen, discernment doesn't necessarily mean that you confront everything right away. Discernment means that you know what you're dealing with and you know how to navigate through it. That's important. That's important because some people have this, this mis, I mean, misrepresent discernment like just because God shows you something that you got to confront it right away. That's not always the case. You, you can know what you're doing, but sometimes God will just have you to just deal with it for time and a place season. Then there may be a time that you have to confront it. When that time comes, deal with it. So, with that said, prayer, hallelujah. Prayer is very important. And I said this in a previous segment. You can tell a person's prayer life by what they say and what they do. What they say and what they do. You can't say that you have a prayer life and, and your prayer life is not motivating you to walk in the things of God. And this is the thing, in, in COVID-19, and in this time of COVID-19, it's easy to know who's got a real prayer life. Those that are afraid of COVID-19 need to get back on the altar because again, listen, COVID-19 or any other disease that, that they concoct in a laboratory is defeated under the power of God. Does everybody understand that? It's defeated under the power of God. We do not operate by this world. We operate, we transform this world. Oh my God, I feel impressed to speak this this morning. Hallelujah. We have to walk in transformation. We have to be different. And it doesn't matter how people look at us. The church of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God operates on a different standard. How can we manifest the kingdom of God here on the earth if we're conformed to the ways of this world? It just is not going to work. So Jesus took all night to pray. And I'm going to tell you something. Your prayer life has to take on a different dimension in this day. If there's any anxiety and fears that you have about what's going on in this world, get before the Lord. Get an encounter with God. Let the Lord show you who you are in Him and who He is through you. Oh, my Jesus. Walk in prayer. True prayer. True prayer transforms a person's life. True prayer elevates a person's mindset because when you're in the presence of God, Nothing else around you really matters. It does not matter at all. Because 
you become a partaker of the nature of God and God has no fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So the true essence of who you are in Christ is based upon your relationship. I want you to hear me clearly. When we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost, we have a different way of thinking than the world because we take on kingdom thinking. Does everybody understand that? Kingdom thinking, when you're truly in the presence of God, it transforms everything around you. Your spiritual senses is more sharpened. Hallelujah. You have a greater sensitivity to things. You recognize things. You see things that other people do not see when you are in the spirit of God. That's powerful. Hallelujah. But just like I said in the previous segment, you have to pray. You have to seek the face of God. Hallelujah. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. It's just as simple. It's just as simple as that. So this is your word for the weekend. We pray that you have a very powerful weekend and that the Lord uses you wherever you go, whether it's in the store, whether it's in the church. We want God to use you in a very powerful way. We bless you in the powerful name of Jesus. We seal this word right now. Hallelujah. And Lord, elevate everyone's prayer life. Lord, Lord, thank you for giving me more time in prayer. Day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week and bring heaven on earth wherever you are. Transform where you are. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In Jesus' name, walk in the presence of God. We love you. Talk to you soon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.